Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining Metals, and I'm doing a follow-up video here. We just ran our 16 by 12 inch gas hammer milk sluice, and I brought the sluice tailings over and we're rerunning them on our shaker table to see what kind of losses we had from the sluice and how much more the shaker table can recover. So if we have some a lot of gold here, we lost quite a bit in the sluice, but if we don't have much gold on the table, then we'll know our sluice is doing a pretty good job recovering. So I just finished running the last of our buckets onto our shaker table here. It's just getting cleaned up and uh, getting the last of the tailings off of there. So we'll take a look here and we'll brush the table down, get all the gold over the number one and number two uh, high grade ports, which is over on this side of the table, and we'll see what we got. And here I've just brushed down the top half of the table and you can see our little gold line there. And this is where most of the gold would show up just because I ran so little. But uh, it's, it's super, super ultra fine gold and there's hardly any of it on there. So just from initial uh, looks here, the sluice did a really, really good job. Now I've shut the table off here. We can take a look. There, There is some gold on there, obviously. You can see the little gold line. But it is super, super fine. And really, there's there's not very much. It looks like there's there's quite a bit there, but it's so fine that there's hardly any weight there. But let's finish uh, brushing the table down here into our number one, and uh, I'll get this panned out, and then I'll pan out the gold from the slew so we can compare. Here's the number one and number two high grade off the shaker table, and these are the sluice tailings. So I'm gonna get them panned out. I got my, my uh, catch pan here. So I'll pan these out, and we'll take a look at how much gold we got. All right, guys, so here's the little bit of gold I got from the sluice tailings. And there's actually more gold in there than I thought there would be, but it's extremely fine very very small and I'll uh, I'll get the shot I'll pull the shot from the other video where we got the concentrates from the sluice and I'll put it up here next to compare it to uh, but there's the the free gold that we lost from the sluice all right guys and here they are together this is the sluice concentrates this is the sluice tailings that I reran on the table and so you can see the difference. I don't know, just estimating here, we probably got 80% somewhere in there recovery with the sluice. And we lost about 20% that we recovered in the table. We'll come in here for a little bit of a close-up. Let's see if I can get a, get a shadow on this. So there you go. You can, you can see the gold now. Uh, this is definitely the coarser fraction uh, is what the sluice recovered. And again, just kind of estimating, you probably got mostly 200 mesh plus there. And then over here, just again, you probably got mostly 200 mesh minus there. And so there is our recovery from the sluice in the table. All right, now I want to do a screen analysis of our gold. And this is a, a 100 mesh screen. And then I have a smaller one here that's a 325 mesh screen. And I'm going to take the gold and I'm going to screen it through both of these. And we probably don't have enough to weigh accurately, but we can get a visual on how much gold passed through each one of these screens. And we'll get three cuts. We'll get 100 plus. We'll get 100 to 325, and then we'll get uh, what goes through a 325 mesh screen. And again, here's our here's our little bit of gold we're going to be dealing with. And uh, I'm going to take it and put it in a in a gold pan right here. Just our mesh screen down in there. I'm going to dump. Let's see if I can get all this on camera here. Dump the gold in there. Okay, so now we got all our gold in our screen here and I'm just going to shake that under water get all that fine gold through the screen it, it pretty much all went through now I'm going to take 100 mesh and wash this screen out 
need some water here. Okay, there's our 100 mesh. I'm just going to drain the water off. Give it a little swirl here. And there we go. There's, let's see if I can do this. There's our 100 mesh plus that we lost in the sluice. Okay, we'll take our gold here and our 325 mesh screen. So this is our 100 mesh minus. And I'm just washing it down into that screen. Trying not to lose any. And now I'll just screen out to 325 mesh. And there's what sits on a 325 mesh screen. Looks like there's some larger junk in there from the pan that I didn't get quite cleaned out. So this is our 100 to 325 mesh gold. Now let's take a look at our 325 minus. And here is our 325 mesh and smaller gold. And as you can see, there's this is where the majority of the gold particles are. We lost a little bit of 100 plus, a little bit more 100 to 325, but the majority of the gold is here in this really, really fine 325 mesh and smaller. So now let's take a look at the gold we caught in the sluice, and we'll give that a screen as well. All right, we'll do a quick flyby here. Here's again, this is the sluice tailings. This is the stuff we lost. So here's the 100 plus, here's the 100 to 325, and here's the 325 minus. All right, now we'll do our same screen analysis for our sluice concentrates here. So I'm gonna start with our 100 mesh screen. I'll get all this stuff in the in the screen here. There's what's sitting on a 100. Just trying to magnet out some of the bigger steel pieces here. There weren't hardly any. And there's our 100 mesh plus. And here's our gold through the 100 mesh screen. So there's there's a significant amount of gold that the sluice caught that was finer than 100 mesh. All right, and here's our gold from 100 to 325. And then here's our gold, 325 and smaller. Here they are all together. This is the 100 mesh plus from the sluice cons. This is 100 to 325 mesh. And this is 325 mesh and smaller. So the sluice actually captured quite a bit of 325 mesh and smaller gold. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to suck up the gold in the pan here into the snuffer bottle. I'm going to transfer it into this blue cloth here. They're then going to burn off, mix with lead, and cupel the lead away and leave a nice gold button. And I'm going to do that with, the, with both uh, the concentrates and the tailings, and that way we can get a real weight percent of gold recovery for the sluice. Now all our gold's in our bottle here. So I'm gonna take out our straw. Make sure it's clean and doesn't have any gold in it. So it looks good. And then I'm gonna get all the gold down to the bottom here. 
end of our point, you can see there's the gold right on my finger. And I'm going to take my finger off, wash all the gold off my finger into that funnel. But all our gold's down there. Might be hard to see. Maybe you can see it. But now I'm just gonna squeeze the water out. Just like you would a pan. Just like you would mercury out of a out of a rag. And all the gold will stay in the rag. And then we can put them in our hot cupels and melt them down. And I, I'll do the same thing with the, with the sluice tailings. And then we can get a good weight on each bead here. And that rag's all clean. There's no gold on that. All our gold's in here. And we'll put her in our cupel and mix some lead in it. And figure out how much gold we got. All right, here's our little electric oven here where we do our cupelling. And I've got some empty cupels in there that are up to temperature. So I'm just going to take each one of our each one of our little gold rags here, put it on there. We want to burn all as much as we can off of there because. The carbon works against the lead in the cupelling process. Here goes the other one. So I'm going to just let those burn, get all the moisture out. Now that one's down to pretty much ash, so I'm going to put some lead in with it. That lead is going to melt. It's going to absorb all the little tiny gold particles. And as the lead oxidizes, the lead oxide rolls off the lead molten bead and is absorbed into this cupel dish here. And that continues until all the lead is oxidized and you're left with your precious metal button. All right, here's our buttons right out of the furnace. And the one on the right is the sluice tailings and the one on the left is the sluice cons. All right, so here's our beads. And a couple things I wanna mention while I'm getting them weighed here. Um, the, the sluice tailings looked like they had quite a bit of gold there, um, but it was all pretty fine. It was really, really small, really, really fine stuff, a lot of it under uh, 325 minus. And so that first ba bead weighs 0 0.075 grams. And so even though it looked like a lot of gold, it was all really fine, which doesn't weigh a lot. All right, I had to do a little convincing on this one to get it out of there, but got it loosened up. But a lot of the uh, gold that was recovered in the sluice was uh, bigger, 100 mesh plus, and, and that 325 mesh plus. And that's where a lot of the weight is. So that bead weighs point. 893, 892 grams. So even though uh, it looked like we lost a significant amount of gold, we actually recovered a really high percentage with the sluice uh, because we could recover those bigger pieces. And so here's the total weight. Here again is the weight of the big one. And so when you divide those two, you end up with the sluice recovering right around 92% of the gold. Uh, so the sluice did a did a really good job recovering that fine gold. 
So you guys may be asking yourself, you know, what's the value of a shaker table then if the sluice does such a good job? Um, and there's a couple things. One is even though the sluice does a pretty good job, you're still recovering almost 10% more with the shaker table. And so over, you know, tens or hundreds of tons, that really adds up to a lot of gold. Uh, and the second one is the shaker table can recover the sulfides or the other heavy material in the number two and number three ports, which may hold some value as well. And it's a continuous thing and, you know, can operate a, a little higher tonnage. So um, our strategy has always been start small, start with a sluice and a hammer mill, get some information, get some cash flow going. And then once you have enough to upgrade to a shaker table or a turnkey system, um, then you can slowly work your way up. The sluice tailings you save. So when you have a system that can recover the, the gold out of the tailings, you just run the tailings back through and you recover uh, even more gold. And that way you can kind of, you know, poor boy or leapfrog your way up through um, the the production line or, or proving up your claim or processing gold without spending, you know, a huge amount of money up front without having any cash flow. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, it was uh, a little bit different than we normally do, uh, but I think it proved the point that uh, the sluice and the hammer mill can be a really good option for some guys just getting started or on a prospecting basis, and, uh, and I think it did a really good job, so we're really happy with it. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, you can find our contact information in the description below. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.